brownie on thread, Frenchie. Pretty little guy. This is the rare small fin grayling. Oh yeah. Also on a thread Frenchie. Native. A native. Basically a nice grayling without a big dorsal. changed to gone and gone to a heavier uh, dropper but I still wasn't quite getting down enough so I went a little heavier point fly as well and then a couple cross later it's brown yeah it's more like well yeah maybe two casts but it was a huge difference I could even see from the drift it just slowed down a lot more right Yep. Seemed to be a little tighter. Yep. So what do you take? Took a little uh, waltz worm variation. Really simple fly. A fly that never worked for me until yesterday. I tied this small variation. Just a waltz worm with slightly different uh, red color and a little custom dubbing mix. And finally I can find a waltz worm that I catch fish on. Everybody else loves the waltz. They never worked for me. Yesterday and today, starting to catch a few. Yeah, I guess that made a difference. It definitely made a difference. Lots of casts in there. A couple of little fish. Get a little heavier. And all of a sudden, a couple more fish in areas you've already covered. This one ate a Paragon. A little haul of Paragon, kind of like a thread Frenchie. With the uh, sculpin olive wire wrapped through it. But I was fishing a couple of uh, three millimeter beads to begin with. Then I went to a 3-3 three, three and a 3, and then I went to two 3-3s. Three, so we got the shallow for fish first, and we got a little heavier, and now we're getting the deeper fish, slowing the rig down a little bit. And whatever that one's on. <laughs> I just turned the camera off to get some rest, Lance. Sorry. Sorry. Deep bend in the rod, pull that fish upstream. There he is. That one's back on that same waltz worm variation. That little guy there. Got a little wrapped up in the dropper though. Beautiful brown, fully thinned wild fish, back for another drink. So this little riffle right here has produced several fish. As I mentioned before, I started pretty shallow with two light flies, then I went one heavy, one light, and then and caught fish with the light, caught fish with the middle, and then went uh, double heavy or heavy-ish. I've got two 3.3 bead flies on now and I've caught three more fish in water I've already covered. So the moral of the story, in nice water conditions and a good run, 
Don't be afraid to change your weights. I think it's best to start high and work low rather than the opposite, but uh, you definitely want to play with different weights in the runs. Whether you're adding split shot or just adding different weighted flies like on a Euro rig as we're using here. Either way, fine tune your, your, your rig, fine tune your system to reach different depths and catch more fish in a small piece of water. Nice. That's a good fish. Just too light for good sized fish. It took me forever to land them. Not a giant, but a nice fish, well built, wild. Great spots. Wild brownie. Slicing and dicing the water. Oh, Cheech is fast into one. Yeah. Oh, with a swish. Another native. Another small fin grayling. That's right in front of Cheech, who's putting on a dry fly. He doesn't like these uh, slightly larger scaled fish. He's a, kind of a yuppie. <laughs> Another bass? You got yourself a small mouth? Because we've got a fish rising. Right there. All right. Okay. Have you done this before? Never done this before. You, uh, you got some uh, food on the dry? No. Okay, so we're gonna throw a CDC fly. Lance is gonna guide me into a fish that's rising over here. And this stuff is really good stuff for dry fly fishing with CDC. It's a gel, you can just put a little tiny bit on, about that much, just kind of mash that into your CDC. And it won't mat down the CDC, it's designed for CDC. Um, so, really cool stuff, goes a long way. So the rig is a drop or a point fly that's weighted, and then we have a corn-fed caddis, all of corn-fed caddis on top. So let me switch your rods for just a second. Yep. I'm not going to fish your fish, no, but, go for it. but all you're going to do, there he was again rising. All you're going to do is cast it across, and then you're going to use the weight of the dropper to kind of anchor it in and just bounce the caddis. <laughs> that's just filthy. It's filthy. So you get, you're going to have to just get it across and then just bounce it. Oh, He's gonna murder it. Maybe take a couple of. Oh, that's awesome. Take a couple of. Oh, well, I go short and just yeah, just so you get the small yeah small little lift so it stays real tight in the water. So it kind of I bet you just tumbled it down too. fly that doesn't work. That's why I never fish flies that I don't tie myself. And he said, hey, look at this fish that's rising. I look over and I turn back and Lance is throwing rocks in the water, making it look like the fish is rising. So I've been wasting all my time. Lance turns around, gets a bunch of fish on check nymphs. <laughs> check nymphs? What are you living in the 90s? Did he Zero. just rise again? Yeah, no, he's about to. Yeah, it's right there. Just all right, one last tip. Streamers are not just for the fall. 
Streamers can be fished in the winter, in the spring, in the summer, and in the fall. And they're not just for dark overcast days. Today we've got some clouds, so we're going from sun to overcast. Uh, but you can catch fish on sunny days on streamers too. Right now we're going to do the Euro Rig uh, with a streamer, which is a little different. You've seen us do it before. But just one last tip, don't forget you can fish streamers all year long. So with this rig we're going to get it down, let it get to depth, and then I'm just going to animate it a little bit. And I'm keeping really good contact, especially as it falls. it up back in, nothing there, let's go a little further up, letting it sink, now I'm going to get tight and start swimming it. No taker. And that was a fish on the, just on the drop. See if we'll come back. The wind's making it a little challenging. <laughs> oh, the, the look away. That count. <laughs> I was still in contact. That counts. <laughs> that doesn't count. Let me see if it counts. You ready? He shoots. He scores. He scores. <laughs> it counts. Oh, too good. Hey, when you shoot, why don't you flop and fall down? Because <laughs> I'm not James Harden, that's why. Yeah. All right, little brownie on the jig streamer. You don't even have to be looking at your side or you can just feel the strikes. Thanks, little brownie. My name's Cheech, and this is my big brother Lance, <laughs> and we're going to fight it out on the river. Well, that'll be easy. If I just push you in, <laughs> gone. Oh, geez. So, we did a lot of stuff today. Lance whacked them. What did you find was the best way to find fish when you weren't catching them? Uh, we did like a, the four minutes of the day you weren't. We, you, know, you were catching them just as steadily as I was. The major things I think we covered were... Uh, separating water types, starting shallow, working to deep, looking for water types that held fish, uh, adapting our rigs, in this case we were Euro nymphing, so adapting weights of flies to cover each depth, and when you moved and you weren't getting down, just taking the 30 seconds to change flies to a heavier fly to get down. If you're not Euro nymphing, maybe try adding some split shot or taking away some shot. Uh, we also cover just different techniques. We bounce some dry flies, we fish nymphs, we fish the jig streamer even though it's not fall. You don't have to fish streamers just in the fall. And uh, we caught fish with most of the methods. It was really fun. I think but the biggest key that I think people can learn from our day today is that tie the same size of fly with various different sizes of beads. So if you just use one of our tutorials to tie, say, the thread Frenchie, you might not have caught a lot of fish if you were fishing a size 16 because it would have been using a, a bead that was way too small to get down here. So I looked at Lance's rig a few times. The beads looked like bowling balls. They got right down and he was in contact with the fish. That's just because you're small and everything looks, you know, <laughs> know. looks really big compared to you. I'm only 5'9". I drive a Tacoma. <laughs> well, 5'9 plus a couple inches, but yeah. Yeah. All right, Shorty. <laughs> All right.